Hi everyone, my name is Jan Havlík and we are currently at the Institute of Teaching and Humanities at the University of Chemistry and Technology in Prague, Czech Republic. And these are the Chemistry Teacher Training Labs where we have 24 workstations. Here students can learn to perform basic classroom operations and also prepare various exciting experiments. In addition, we also organize chemistry clubs for younger children and various competitions for talented students. 3D printing has become an essential component of our teaching. We try to include it as much as we can and it goes beyond the scope of our university. We have been engaging primary school children, high school students and university students alike. We work with teachers at various schools across the Czech Republic to show them the potential of 3D printing in chemistry education. Thanks to the local Prusa for Schools program, we were able to acquire a free original Prusa 3D printer. The only condition was to prepare an interesting school project with it. Alongside that, we also provide training for other teachers to improve their overall knowledge of 3D printing. We now boast six 3D printers and the technology has become part of our regular teaching. When it comes to filament-based 3D printing, we currently have enough machines to cover almost all our needs. Nevertheless, we are considering investing in resin-based machines in order to produce detailed and intricate objects that filament-based machines cannot make. I had the opportunity to get my hands on 3D printing for the first time through the Prusa for Schools program. In the past, I visited various conferences where I saw mostly theoretical demonstrations of how 3D printers work and we saw printed models of viruses and so on, but that was it. That's why getting our own 3D printer was a major turning point. For me, it was also a motivation to start actively working in Fusion 360 and explore its potential for educational purposes. Our project, which we've been working on in the Teacher Training Institute, was a magnetic construction set that contains spheres which represent atoms. We wanted the sizes of the spheres and the angles between them to be in line with their real-world counterparts, meaning that, for example, the oxygen atom, that's the red one, is bigger than the hydrogen atom, the white one. Thanks to the built-in magnets, the kit can be easily assembled and you can demonstrate, for instance, the rotation of the bonds. We are currently trying to dig deeper into the potential of 3D printers that use filament as their printing material. We are working on various ambitious projects to test what these printers can achieve. We are testing not just mechanical properties and durability, but also resistance to various chemicals. One great project we printed recently at a summer camp was this skull. It's a platypus skull. And given how many different tiny parts it has, it was quite a challenge. But it turns out that even with a regular FDM printer, you can do projects like this. So thanks to this project, we were able to produce an exact replica of a skull and the biology students could touch it and hold it in their hands. And that is quite unusual because such skulls are rare in these parts and most of the time they are usually locked away in a museum somewhere. So the students are absolutely thrilled. Even the younger kids, such as those in the first grades, are excited to get involved. They are just starting to learn to read, and yet they are able to understand the basics of 3D printing. Of course, it's more about finding something to print on the internet, but they are able to grasp the basics of Tinkercad, so they can design something simple and with a bit of help from us, they can actually create it. I'm a big fan of Prusa printers because of how robust and durable they are. I can take these printers, put them in my car and drive to the other side of the country and I know they will work when I get there. Maybe some light calibration will be required, but nothing serious. So while the price of these machines is higher compared to cheap Chinese printers, 
It's this kind of reliability and robustness that make them so valuable to us. I could imagine our lives without 3D printing, of course. After all, I remember what it was like living without the internet. So this is somewhat similar. Just like the internet, 3D printing has become a part of our daily routine. It helps us every week in some way, and it's such a useful and convenient technology to have on hand. Things that used to be complicated to make and had to be custom made by specialized companies can be now done on site. We don't have to spend large sums or use complicated machining processes to have something manufactured. Although it's not just about making more and more complex and detailed models. For example, one student came up with this simple box that can be created in a matter of minutes. This box, which is attached to a mobile phone with rubber bands, is actually a very cheap spectrophotometer, and it's very practical. When I am out in the field, for example, with nothing more than a mobile phone and a few tic-tac boxes, I can detect the amount of pollution or determine the chemical compound responsible for the concentration of heavy metals in water. Normally, a professional device of this kind would be incredibly expensive. Yet here we have a clever solution for a fraction of the cost. 3D printing is not just about ambitious projects. It serves us in everyday applications too. For example, our lab required a stand that could hold 20 test tubes and be submerged in an ultrasonic bath without corroding. And so we crafted a simple stand out of PETG filament that is perfect for this kind of application and it is almost indestructible. And of course, this technology is also useful when we need to produce various spare parts and also parts that are unique for all sorts of specialized devices in our university. I believe that the current advancements in the 3D printing field are so good, the technology meets all of our needs. So it's up to us now to recognize and fully grasp the potential of these machines and to incorporate them into teaching in an engaging and educational way. So our goal is to find innovative and enjoyable ways to use 3D printing to its fullest potential and make the teaching even better and more fun for everyone.